welcome back everyone to the Frequency Podcast. It's Dan and Joe here, um, East Coast and West Coast and uh, everywhere in between. And uh, we're actually video this time. And uh, although we may post this on audio, our audio feed too, I'm not sure. Our plan is just, we're going to listen to the song. We're going to take a few notes about what we think about it. Uh, we'll intersperse some cuts of the song so you can kind of hear what we're listening to as well. And then we're just going to share our individual um, perspectives on the song and maybe have a dialogue around it. So that's that's really the idea. This would be the first of hopefully many of these. And if they're easy mm -hmm. enough to do, we'll do them all the time. Without further ado, though, we're going to dive into the first song that we're going to listen to, which is by an artist that is being really pumped. Um, it's Lauren Daigle, and she is... You know, on Billboard, all of a sudden they're talking about her getting ahead of all major artists like Drake and Pink and all those artists that are out there. And it's like a new phenomenon. Um, she is sort of a, a, a label push. She is a, a signed artist. And we thought, well, let's listen to why she's so popular. And Joe and I have not listened to this song. So we're listening to this for the first time. I don't know how loud this is going to be. Where are you now? When darkness is to win Where are you now When the world is crumbling Oh, I, I, I hear you say pen so i have to just kind of think of some stuff so <laughs> all right you ready no i wrote some stuff down initial thoughts joe two things that stick out to me just overall one if it came on the radio i would probably not turn the dial i would probably let the song play um mm -hmm. the second is would my daughter enjoy that my daughter's 24 yeah yeah she would just dig on it it's very mm -hmm. it just uh, it's infectious it's very resemblant of songs that are popular and secular, which kind of goes to uh, our point that uh, we always seem to be following in the wake of what's happening in secular music. 
Um, mm-hmm. But those are kind of the, the, the two things that jumped right out at me. There's other thoughts I have, but what about your initial thoughts there? Um, not, I didn't have, obviously, full stereo in my headphones or anything like that, but I thought I, I heard enough of it to know that um, it, it sounded like Disney to me. M- Moana? Yeah. It <laughs> sounded bit, yeah. Lion King-ish. Oh, it, yeah. it was like almost like it was being branded to market to the movie, that, that hmm. sort of world. Yeah. Sort of... Um, uh, inspirational happy simple so you're coming at it maybe from a cynical perspective (laughs) yeah Yeah. but i couple that with the fact that that's actually what makes people happy yeah yeah so i'm not saying it's a bad move um and i also i you know through the the skype network it sounded like there was a bit of a put on rastafarian jamaican accent (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Let me let me comment on that because yeah, you, you may have seen me laugh at a point in, as I was listening to the song. I did. Oh, you did, did too. Okay, yeah. So we both <laughs> did. So, um, yeah, absolutely. It started out, and I go Adele. You know, I'm clearly yes. hearing some Adele, and but you know, and I'm like, okay, I understand. That's kind of how she's being marketed, and she's got a, a fantastic voice. So you know, whatever. Uh, that's not a bad thing. And then the drums started. And yeah. I went, whoa, that came out of nowhere. What What was that? And so I heard this kind of gospel and then this kind of, you know, the, the syncopated beat. And I'm like, okay, well, I, that caught me by surprise. It made me giggle a little bit. And I had to go, am I laughing at the song or am I laughing because there's kind of a joyfulness to that? And I'm like, I guess mm-hmm. it's joyful. And then it went into that. It kind of weaved that Caribbean thing. And I went, I don't know what yeah. you're doing here. I, it I, It kind of lost me there. I still think I wouldn't change the channel. And I know that like I could see Sam 10 year old in the backseat digging on yeah. it. I could see my wife rolling her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. And I agree with everything you just said. Um, I wrote down uh, Jamaican question mark. <laughs> yeah. uh, and again, I have friends in Jamaica. I've been to Jamaica. Yeah. That's not the cruise accent. Ships. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, yeah, it's, um, yeah, like it's no patois, which is like their language, but yeah, yeah. Um, it was simple. Yeah. Like super simple yeah. and D- Disney esque is what I wrote, mm-hmm. um, which I already mentioned. Um, now, J- Jason Ingram helped write the song. Oh, okay. Yeah. I looked, I looked it up just before we started. And so he's a mainstay in Christian music. Yeah, um, yeah. His name is probably on most worship songs. There, his name is through all of them, um, which tells me that he's smart. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm not being cynical here. I'm, I'm trying to look through a positive lens to say they know the market. They know what people want to hear. Because like you said, if it was on on the radio, it would stay on. I would agree with you. I would be like, okay, it's got a groove. Yeah. I never once went to any sort of uh, spiritual realm, uh, significant spiritual realm in the song at all. It was, oh. it, it was incredibly sort of like moralistically happy. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm going to depart from you there. Yeah. Uh, because um, we've got some heavy stuff going on in my family right now, and and there were points in there where I'm like, boy, if I played it for this person, they would probably start to cry because they would see themselves in this conversation and see their relationship with the father. Now, it was never, I I think that you're right in that um, there's no, it, it was a bit oblique. Yeah, it's all good stuff. It's almost like a grandfather holding up a grandchild's face when they're crying and saying it's okay. Like yeah. that's sort of what I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so again, it's not like everything has to be a deep theological, uh, song. Uh, in fact, sometimes it makes it worse, um, because art is art. A song is a song. Yeah. Try to look at it at face value. I think they are, they're on to the fact that people are paying attention in the world, not in the Christian world. It's everyone's listening to Lauren Daigle now. It'll hit mainstream. It'll hit, you know, all the stations. Because it's safe. Yeah, um, that's absolutely. not necessarily a bad thing. So, what's your um, what's your score? What zero to ten? What's your score? Um, all cynicism aside, um, because that is, you know, I tend to go that way. I would say it's a good 
Um, if we're going by the the frequency rating system, check on the website. I'd say it's a, yeah, which we're we never give tens. That's right. So, um, I'd say probably a six point five. Cool. All right. Yeah, I was. I, I'm hovering between a six and a seven myself. So yeah, I I'm with you. I'll go six point five on that. And for those of you who are not familiar with our the way our ratings work, it's a pretty good rating. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, we don't give much above. We give sevens occasionally. I think we gave one eight once. So yeah. six point five for Look Up Child by Lauren Daigle. There you go. Cool. All right. I look forward to doing more of these, Joe. Yeah, folks, if you if you like this, uh, make sure you let us know. Let us know other songs that you'd like us to listen to and respond to. Um, we're going to do our best to remain ignorant so that we can respond and react uh, the, the first time we listen to it and we won't have had listened to it several times before. So, folks, yeah. we, we hope you enjoy it. Let us know. Yeah.